Hello and welcome to Indie Tuesdays on Indie Comic Ninja. I'm your host, Ben Dupay. Ramondo Burnside. Dexter Jacobs. And we are your independent comic book ninjas. So how's everyone doing this week? Good. Fantastic. Good. It was a busy week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it. Oh man, yeah. Same every week's same a busy here. week. Honestly, hey, no, well, <laughs> this we're adults. Uh, <laughs> it tends to happen. I don't want to adult this, anymore. Yeah, I'm done. I know I'm done. Yeah, this, <laughs> this week was nuts for me, man. Like I worked 50 hours at my adulting job. Yeah. Um, and like that. That's more than I'm used to. I'm not used to it. Like, I'm not an overtime guy normally. I, mm-hmm. I choose not to be. I just, if they put it out there, I, I just say no. I, um, yeah. But I got a wild hair, and you know, I'm making a little less money, so I was like, hey, I'll work some overtime. So I did 10 hours, and then I did my normal four or five hours at the comic shop. So mm-hmm. I'm at like 55 hours now, and I'm, I'm exhausted, man. Especially like some of the scheduling suck because I got off at 12.30 a.m. last night, and I went into work this morning at 8 a.m., so I'm just like fucking exhausted what What? yeah yeah i know it's crazy and today was literally a shit show at mayhem and i will say (laughs) literally a shit show because Mm. i get to work oh because you're the cleaning person yeah that's what they told me when i said i knew you Dude, oh, they said I'm the cleaning person. <laughs> yeah. the that, was, that was nice. Like, of them. Oh, that's what he does. Juice it up. <laughs> yeah, that that is what I do. <laughs> well, they also mentioned you're des- you're designing shirts, so there was a little. Oh, bit of they prestige. mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, oh, cool. The tall bald guy with the beard. Yeah, yeah. I don't know their so, names. Yeah, well, yeah. I want to because that's not a shirt thing yet. So um, oh, we can delete that. Um. Oh, turn. Hold on. Sorry, we had a little technical difficulties there. So yeah, I get to work this morning, and there's like freaking. Like 15 cardboard boxes not broken down blocking the door into the shop, which they didn't even bother to move them to the back of the store, <laughs> which I'm like, first off, like, you lazy fucks. <laughs> like, why are you not moving things to the back of the store? Yeah. I love it. But it doesn't end there because then, like, I start to go to – I swept and I go to mop. Mop bucket's missing. So I'm like, this has like bad, bad, news, <laughs> bad news written all over it. So I go into the shop and I'm like, hey, guys, where's the mop bucket? Like, oh, the toilet leaked last night. So so they, they mopped in the bathroom in the shop. So the mop bucket's back there. I'm like, oh, so you're you, telling me you, you had a little bit of, So you're telling so, me you had Murphy's Law going on. So, so, so the toilet leaked. And these guys mopped up what I'm assuming to be sewage water. I, it could have just been dirty water. But they... Probably the, not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they left the mop bucket full in the back of the room oh. with the mop in it overnight, mm. which I'm like, dude, it takes like two seconds to go out back yeah. and dump the mop. Can you choose door water, number so. two? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know, man. It, 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 uh, I was not a happy camper, though. Yeah. I, I kind of lost my temper a little yeah. bit. It's That's just a Murphy's like, Law day for sure. Dude. Yeah. It's, it's, you, it was nuts. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So needless to say, I had a crazy week. I didn't. I didn't even read all of the graphic novel we're covering today. I read half of oh, it because um, yeah. just, there just wasn't time. Um, I, I kind of sacrificed a little time where I normally would have read our books throughout the week. I read like the first three graphic novels of Invincible because it just yeah. – I'm, I'm hooked, man. That book mm-hmm. is so good. It's such a good book. I will say the first volume is very um, very slow, very developing the family setup. and stuff. Yeah. but. All of that is 100% necessary in the second volume, which just goes from zero to hundred. Like, nice. like it's it's very like picks up the pace very quickly. So, yeah, uh, the first volume, the second volume of that is amazing. I got like halfway through the compendium and then I turned it back into work. So, nah. mm-hmm. um, yeah, because I just I didn't want to have it for an extra week. So I, I thought about buying it, but it's like fifty bucks, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, man. I mean, that is a good deal Sounds for five like- graphic novels, but I, I still. Mm. It's a lot yeah, of money. So that is. Um, so yeah, that was a good book, uh, but I did not get to all of the fade out, which that's okay. It was. I'm still going to read it, but it, it was a good book. We got a good yeah. lineup this week. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, how are you guys doing this week, Mondo? How's things going over at Wells? Hmm, not bad, not bad. Um, you know, work is work. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's nice to have a job, I guess. You know, some people have that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people have that problem. It's nice. Uh, it's nice to be but, able to say that about a job. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't hate my job or anything. Yeah. You know. But yeah. uh, no, it's going fine. Um, other than that, you know, just spending time with family and uh, kids and playing games and nice. you know, all the normal stuff. Just trying to bang through some video games and stuff. And what are you playing some, right now? Uh, so like what was the last thing you played? Little Nightmares. Uh, How my, was I? I my daughter's love GameStop it. told me about the game's that. called Nightmares. Little, Little Nightmares. Nightmares. Little Nightmares. Okay, it's kind of like. Um, 
uh, what was it? In uh, the game Inside. Did you play that one? No, it's no. a side scroller. It's it reminds hmm. me of like oh, in- it's a side scroller. They still make side yeah. scrollers. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. interesting. Lots it's of like indie. um, oh, well, indie. That makes sense. Yeah. What's the one? The same made by the same guys that made Inside. Um, where you're, it's like a silhouette, and you're going through like the woods and everything. I'm trying mm. to think of it. God, yeah, God. I'm not a game aficionado. But so. it's really good. It's a little girl, and you're like going through and trying to do these puzzles, trying to figure out. And these guys, these people want to eat you. It's and it like, looks like a Tim Burton movie too. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it looks oh, like it looks like, like Nightmare Before Christmas type stuff. Yeah. Stop motion, I guess. Yeah. 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 It looks kind of like that, but but not. And it's like really dark to some degree and fantasy, but dark. And you're trying mm-hmm. to get through these puzzles and try to get through these areas. And each area leads into a new area and new puzzles and stuff. Hmm. It's really fun. It's, it's a short game. It's an indie game. So I cool. mean, it's not much for the for entry. It's maybe like fifteen or twenty bucks. Worth the money though. A couple of hours worth mm. of fun, and it's 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 good. My, my, nice. kid, my kids like it. They like that kind of stuff when I play it. Hmm. So I'm, I'm in like budget land right now. So I'm like I, I got my tax return. And I was living on you know what the what the old folks call high on the hog <laughs> is what they say. Um, yeah. And and now I'm back in. That's when you're living above your means. Sort high of on the hog. What is that? Uh, I don't know. It's some yeah old, old people. <laughs> the say, I think I of the literal. Uh, tra- meaning of that yeah the, it means you're living above your means and now i've oh, gotten yeah, yeah. to the point where i've like i blew through about half of that money and my wife and i are like okay it's probably time to start budgeting yeah. a little bit because yeah. i'm making less money at the new job so right. i'm a lot more choosy about the games that i buy now yeah, yeah. and it's like I, so i'm i'm debating on that one i think i'm gonna wait you on can wait in, on that yeah it's i'm gonna wait on deal. injustice i think um but otherwise mm-hmm. i'm playing injustice the original i re-downloaded it i already owned it Cool. Uh, digitally, start downloading it again so I can get ready for Noah because uh, he and I have been talking a little trash here and there. And oh, Texas yeah. 2 comes out next week, and I'm not trying nice. to show up to the party late. Yeah, well, I'm going to be in there too. You guys just wait. Yeah. I'm going to. My buddy Jake's going to get it, and he's been talking shit to me. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to you know, bring it on. I'm going to be the arms. rookie coming in there slamming all you guys. Man. I'm going to hey, be hey. the underdog. Come is on that, in. Is that yeah. a fighting game? Yeah. yeah. It's like Mortal Kombat all except DC with DC characters. Comics characters. Okay. And it's okay. like 40 something characters, maybe more than now with DLC and everything. But hmm. yeah. Ooh, it's going to be good. Yeah. For- I'm, I'm not even going to work Tuesday. I have some appointments, and I was like, clear my schedule i'm gonna play yeah. this game off <laughs> no one's gonna be home i'm gonna play that and play this other game uh, farpoint for vr i'm, I'm gonna be at mayhem or at um excuse me mayhem at gamestop tuesday morning first thing because okay. i want to get my PS4? jersey yep ps4 okay, so good. yep well, i'll be jazz kick too yeah <laughs> oh we'll see we'll see buddy if green lantern's in there then oh yeah, he's in there oh i'm 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 gonna win so how you doing dex uh good what have you been busy with i don't know a lot of work uh running around i don't feel like i had any lunches this week Uh, oh that sucks i did i did get to go to like i mean yeah i don't know uh i ran down to the comic book store and they were out of ad after death uh at capes downtown so then i had to i had to ask you to pull one aside for me at mayhem and so then i ran there the next day over my lunch yeah uh and then yesterday i was uh doing some mother's day errands over my lunch so nice just kind of trying to keep up on things which yeah. uh my mom listens to this show so i wanted oh, to give really? a shout out and say happy mother's day which nice. this comes out after mother's day but we're recording happy on mother's day Dex's yeah. mom yeah happy mother's day my mom doesn't listen to Neither yeah, does yeah. i don't under yeah. i don't know why she listens to this but she says hey, uh she she says she really enjoys our banter and it, at least laughs your mom when we laugh what the podcast so. nice. is nice. yeah my no, mom yeah I, every half my family i'm like <laughs> like i'm on a they're like oh you heard you're on a podcast what's that and it's like man it's like the radio only it's like cooler. those only on the radio. Radio. <laughs> or whatever yeah. you know yeah. and they're like so. oh okay maybe i'll listen to it like you're lying you're not gonna listen to it yeah but but happy mother's day mom yeah yeah yeah, that's awesome. Happy Mother's Day, Dexter's mom. And thank you for listening to yeah. us. We really appreciate that. So, um, and, you know, thank anyone who listens to us. Really, uh, we do have some rewards for people who want to go the extra mile. We do have a Patreon page uh, that's located at patreon.com slash uh, Indie Comic Ninja, where you can go and find all of the stuff that we offer in return for uh, patrons. Yeah. What were you going to say? And uh, well, I wanted to say that uh, J.M. Bryan, I uh, talked to him the other day. He's one of our patrons. And and he has a really cool webcomic, uh, and I really liked his style. So I asked him to draw us a ninja face yeah, uh, mm-hmm. for stickers, and I actually uh, I had a coupon, so I ordered them last night, and there's a picture of it for you guys. Oh, no way. Nice. So, uh, nice. so if you become a patron, you can get this sweet ninja face sticker that you can't see because it's <laughs> Do we get them uh, the just radio. for being on the show? Uh, I don't know, like 
Five bucks, probably. Nice. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So uh, nice. I'm going to start haggling with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone who works here gets a sticker. All right, cool. Um, the bizarre. But yeah, yeah, if you become a patron, um, I'll post a picture in the, sh- in the show notes, I guess. Uh, nice. They should be coming. I'll get them on May 22nd. Um, they're three inch stickers. I got that was a sweet coupon. Nice. <laughs> so they're yeah. gonna be huge. I gotta talk to you about some stickers too, man. Yeah, same so. here for for NCR and Glitch. Well, yeah, yeah, we yeah. we we need to get in on a we maybe got, we can we get, get in on down. a deal or something. So. Yeah. Well, and if I mean, if you want ten dollars off and you have stickers to make on yourself, uh, if you go to uh, Twitter, I I posted a, th- a coupon where you get ten dollars off. What me? And then I get ten dollars. You? Yeah. It's like a pyramid scheme. I feel like you're Oprah kinda, Winfrey. It's all kind of, of like uh, our iTunes review, like. I give you a review, you give me a review. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. You know, we work it out. But it's know. stickers, it's sticker mule. Yeah. So I don't know. Head over to okay. head over to my Twitter. I'll put a link in the show. Look notes. under your chair. Nice. What's under there? Yeah. You get some stickers. And a, you'll get some stickers. It's a voucher. <laughs> yeah, you'll get some stickers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to do it. Um, and bees. Who doesn't love Oprah Winfrey? I, mean, I like the on. the meme though with Oprah and it's yeah. bees and bees. everyone's flipping out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I see that. Um, so uh, we do anyway. have a listener line. If you want to yeah. leave us a voicemail, uh, you can call us and leave that, and we will play it on the show. That is uh, phone number for that is six four one seven one five three nine zero zero extension three four five seven zero three. And if you don't want to have your voice on the show, but you do want to have your voice heard, email us at indie. I'm sorry, info at indiecomic dot ninja, and we will read your email on the show. Do we have an email this week? I don't think so. I was no. gonna double check. I always think when you say bring up the mail, I don't know if it's because when my my oldest was younger, she used to watch Blues Clues. And they're like mail time. Yeah, and I'm mail. like, oh man, I don't want. Mail? No. We Just should get like a <laughs> sample of, of that. I heard some pretty scummy things about Steve. Oh, Steve the, from the original guy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's like a musician now. Oh, Wait, really? Is it the original dude? No, she's the one. <laughs> he's like yeah. bald. Like, my childhood. He's bald now, and I think he's a musician. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't surprise me. So, um, so <clears throat> yeah, that being said, we will move things on into the news. All right, so this week for the news, I have some stuff, some things to talk about here. Stuff things? Things and stuff that happened in the mm-hmm. last week. Uh, first off, <laughs> non-comic related, but news related, uh, Blade Runner 2049, oh, new, yes. new trailer came out. That was I, amazing. I don't really like Blade Runner. What? I, you shut I, your mouth. I, what I'm is sorry. wrong with you? I gotta say, Dexter, I, let's form, let's join together to form Wonder Twins and kick his ass. Yeah, I know. No, Massamoon. I get to be yeah. the dragon, though. You're the, you're the no. bucket of water, though. Uh, we should be to, Massamoon. Oh, that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> Have you ever played Chrono, Chrono Trigger? Yes. Yeah, Massamoon. Okay. Those yeah. two good. Let's do that. Or Station. Mm. Or we can not kick Ben's Either ass. Either way, talk he's about going this. Down. Yeah, Station has a sweet back crack. So I tried to watch Blade Runner number one. What's wrong with us? Continue, I, tried, I tried to watch Blade Runner number one. Uh, and, okay, um, I I was doing so. so I, I was under the event uh, the the perception that this was like a Star Wars ad- action adventure type thing. Oh no, um, no, no, this is not a light. It's a noir watch. psychological. Yeah, so sci-fi. it's, it's a Robots. very yeah. very hard movie to. Uh, you have to pay attention. Oh mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to rewatch it and pay attention to it because this new trailer Which, looks sweet. You know what version you watched? Um, director's the director's cut. cut. Okay, yep. that's the, the good one. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the one I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say that's the one you need to watch. So, what do you guys? Because I, I love the trailer. I didn't know Jared, Jared Leto was in it. Which that? Oh, oh makes, yeah, that, he's that, like that, yeah. That makes me love it a little bit less. But yeah. um, because I hate Jared Leto. With Ryan, passion. Is it Ryan Gosling? I, I like Ryan Gosling. He's the yeah, new he's, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Jared Leto is the new one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like Ryan Gosling's like hunting down Harrison Ford. Yeah, yeah. And I like Ryan Gosling. He's yeah, yeah. Him. He's good. I haven't seen him in a ton of things, but I like him. To to your point, though, yeah, I'll give it to you. It is a hard movie to get into if you didn't watch it before, and I think that's with a lot of movies that are like from the past, especially like old sci-fi and things like that. I think you have to have somewhat of a, I don't know, a. A cost uh, of entry uh, of having watched it in, upbringing back then yeah. because it was way it was like oh my god well, this is amazing and then kinda, it's harder to well, like compare it now it's rough to watch now too because it's just like they're still using like tube televisions and dot matrix printers right, 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 right. <laughs> but then they're like using weird future technology where they're able to zoom in and like rotate a camera on a yeah. still photo <laughs> it's, it's a weird yeah. thing and it, I think some of it's nostalgia and I hate to put it on yeah. that but some of it's like that where it's like oh my god when I was a kid and I watched this it blew my mind yeah. like this is so cool well I had a hard time getting um, my like wrapping my head around the concept of the replicants right like well, and part of it is just that like so 
the technology and I watched it like uh, last year. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like goofy that some of the technology is so very like nineties future, but then some of the technology is like envisioning of robots that like, I don't even know if anyone like, it's hard to think of robots being that advanced even now. It's like a combination of it's like weird. of shitty technology that wouldn't be in the future that you would think. And yeah. then stuff that we didn't even think of yet can mash together. Yeah. So it's like, how'd you get it's very that? Strange. You didn't get this, yeah. But, kinda, but you don't do that. You don't pick it apart. You're watching it. You yeah, love yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that really fixed the, that movie for me, cause I didn't like the ending. And then, yeah. uh, somebody explained to me that Harrison Ford is a replicant. Spoiler alert. I don't want to know that. Um, uh, but well, well guess, that that was a it's like that's the rumor. It's like that's hint, a rumor. No, it's yeah. it's like hinted at, and it's been confirmed. Um, because I think that's what oh, the second is? movie is yeah, about. He doesn't know. Yeah, well, I think he re- there's a an alternate ending where he realizes it at the okay, end, well. and so like he and that lady are like uh, special replicants that don't die as fast. Well, when I when I leave this <clears throat> podcast, I'm going to have my brain scrubbed so that I never heard this. Yeah, right. that yeah. way I can be surprised if that in fact happens. So, um, <laughs> I, I think a lot of the upbringing and stuff. I I don't know because my wife actually had never seen Star Wars as a kid. What? Um, but she she loved the Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. so like I think if you were into Harrison Ford and action adventure movies from that time period, mm-hmm. I had that same yeah. perception of like okay I haven't seen this but I was into that genre. Sure. Um, but this is hardcore sci fi. This is like um, yeah yeah. I think some genres are easier to to go back to and watch in retrospect, where other ones are a little you know harder to get yeah. into. Yeah, and like you said, this is a hard sci fi. No, and and noir on top of noir. that, yeah. it's not like going to watch Aliens with Sigourney Weaver. You can watch that all day, and the, they hold up. Well, that's mm-hmm. horror sci-fi, so. exactly. But yeah. this is more like a noir. Like yeah. we're on a, you know, I'm solving a case, well, and da da da. Yeah. Detective, and, you know, detective sci- work. Sci-fi, so, which is strange. It's, it's a it's a slight curve on in one direction. But yeah, yeah I'm glad you yeah. watched it. At least uh, just just to say you did. Yeah. Yep. Um, That's the only reason I watched it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a list of those I need to watch just yeah. to say I did. I think it's on Netflix for anyone it. who has Netflix and hasn't seen it yet. Just by right. the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I, the first I one. purchased it, but yeah. yeah. Um, I think everybody has that list of things they need to watch that yeah. they never got around oh. to, like Godfather and mm-hmm. shit like that. Yep. You know, so. oh, I still haven't seen Godfather. So mm-hmm. moving things on Don't here, uh, we got one another piece of news. Um, all four Avatar sequel release dates are confirmed. I don't Wait, really want a second. All the four? blue guys? Yeah. You said, oh, four, I, I don't four? need a, Wait, I don't need yeah. a second one. So it's going to be f- there's going to be 5 total. Oh my god. Yep. Oh man, why? I, why, why, why James indeed? Cameron? Why? No, not, wait. Well, not only that, yeah, but James Cameron. The, I don't have a problem with how many he's making, but it's crazy how long he's taking to make each one. 2020, 2021, 2024, and Oh, so the next ones are going to be okay. bam, bam, bam. So he took forever to make the sequel, but the rest of them should be pretty in rapid Interesting. succession. So 20, 21, uh-huh. 24, and 25. So we got one year apart, then uh, three on. years apart, then three years apart, or then one year what apart. Is, has that guy done anything since the last episode? Avatar? Titanic? I, I, I don't know. Well, since like <laughs> no, the last Avatar know. movie. I, um, I feel like each movie he makes, he, he gets did worse. Did he do The Departed? Uh, mm, no, I don't think so. Maybe. Uh-huh. See, and the thing was, too, I think he was he he was quoted as saying that he was waiting for technology to catch up. Because he had plans for the original well, the Avatar. George Lucas on him. Yeah. yeah, he had yeah. plans for the original Avatar like back in, like I don't know, like the, like no. the 90s or something like that. And he postponed it and was like, I'll put it on the shelf because technology hadn't caught to what you wanted to do. That was George Lucas with the Star Wars. And that too, yeah. He he was like that actually. He he wanted a live action Star Wars TV show, but he was like, I refuse to do it uh, at this caliber, so I'm waiting yeah. until TV shows can be made at a certain caliber, and that just yeah. never happened. That'd so. be kind of like cool. Cameron's a visionary. I don't know Star if you Wars know TV that. Show. Like he saw where technology was going. He was like, okay, cinematography yeah. is going to get way better. I see where this is incrementally getting to. I'm going to wait. He's just and then little, he did, and then it blew up. It's like the most he, highest. He's just movie a little ever. like pompous about it, and that's what yeah. I don't like. The funny thing about Avatar is when that movie came out, I, I didn't have it. I didn't watch TV at all. Sure. Like I didn't watch any TV. I was in college, and I was more focused on video games, I suppose. But uh, mm-hmm. Uh, I saw a trailer for it on uh, Apple trailers. They, they yep. used to have this trailer. Maybe yep. they still do. Oh, yeah. Uh, and do. so I saw the trailer, but they have a lot of like uh, low-budget trailers on there, too. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was a low-budget film. I was just like, oh, this isn't going to be popular at all. It looks dumb. And then my friend wanted to go see it. I'm like, why? That looks dumb. And then we went yeah. and saw it, and I was just like, yep, that was dumb. <laughs> I think the hype train carried it more than yeah. anything. I mean, it well, was cool. Yeah. Well, it was visually cool. Don't get me wrong. And it was like one of the first like well done uh, 3D movies. Yeah. So I mean, that it was a really cool 3D movie to see. I don't know, man. The fact that they use papyrus font in, that, that killed me. That like <laughs> for mm-hmm. for graphic. I don't know if like it's like. Uh. 
PC, it's, PC graphic it's designer like one, talk, but it's, it's like, like a half step up from Comic Sans. Yeah, it's it's just oh, okay. a it's just a it's, bad, it's 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 a font uh, that's considered to be like you shouldn't use it, and they used it for the title, the of the Avatar. Yeah. yeah, it's just like yeah. man, and it's why? just like you spent this much money on this film and you couldn't get a custom font. <laughs> yeah, or just use Helvetica like everyone else. Yeah, man, I I don't know. <laughs> he probably had crazy. so much shit going on. He was like, you know what? You take care of this. I trust you. And some dude was like, all right, Comic <laughs> yeah. Sans po- two point five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of what it is. Um, so, <laughs> next two pieces of news are going to be things that Dexter is very excited about. First, <gasps> first one oh, is uh, Hellboy. Ex- well, I got that. We'll, Dang ta- it. we'll talk about that. How then. did I think I didn't um, have news and I forgot guess. about that? So, anyway, yeah, uh, let's move on. R-rated Hellboy reboot <laughs> oh, okay. uh, is uh, is uh, nothing but good news, as this article says. Legit. So, Guillermo del- so let me read this. No, uh, Guillermo. Gu- Guillermo del Toro is not doing uh, the sequel. Um, same with Ron Perlman. He is not yep. signed up. And I, I think, like... I don't know if they're going hard reboot on this and actually recasting uh, a new Hellboy. Or I know that the guy from Stranger Things, the cop, the dad, he's going to be involved. Yeah. But they haven't actually confirmed that he is Hellboy yet. Um, and oh the, wow, he might be. He might just be in it. They, they, uh, yeah. They, and I, I don't know. They may be going the route of having like, um, like Lobster Johnson or any of the other side characters. Maybe exploring that some more and not having i don't know if it's actually going to be a hellboy movie or if it's just going to be a movie in the hellboy universe what do you think uh i mean i guess i haven't read too much about it uh from what i understood it was it's it's hellboy um they have a title and i forget what it is this is live action. this was a working title what it was a working title. oh yeah yeah, it's live actually um it's not actually the title of the movie it's like the working title of the movie. okay well but so basically i don't think they're going to be redoing any of the old the storylines from the movies they've already made the so which is kind of which basically means they're not going to start at the beginning because the first movie is basically the first volume um, yeah. from what I, I that's disappointing that they're gonna just scrap all the characters and stuff. Like Ron Perlman mm. did a great job. I yeah, thought. I mean he is helpful. Arguably, to me. yeah. In my in my opinion, I mean maybe that doesn't count. For I don't a whole know. Lot, but I, I enjoyed their, those movies personally. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm happy to see somebody else. I don't try Hellboy it, honestly. I'm um, yeah. looking for Hellboy and I think, three. Yeah, it would have been nice if they could have made a trilogy. That's um, one more, yeah. But for some reason, Hollywood just didn't want to do it. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping that going R, rating it R, is going to like blow that mm-hmm. that uh, H HBU we're going to call it, Hellboy Universe. Yeah. Uh, blow um, it up a little. Blow it up a little, and then maybe, maybe we'll get a Lobster Johnson movie. That would be awesome. That would be freaking sweet. I'd be happy with but... just even like a Lobster Johnson <laughs> showing being up. a character in the he's movie. He's not it, a cameo, but yeah. an actual well, character. In, in Hellboy, he's a ghost. Like, he shows up sometimes. Yeah. Um, but it would be way cooler if he could actually have a, a series taking place in the third. 30s or 40s yep. where the comic yeah. takes place. Well, qu- question for you guys, just yeah. out of curiosity. How do you feel about this trend of everyone try- of everyone trying to make these movies rated R now? Well, like, Hel- Hellboy... I, I, I think it's cool, but as long as it's not overused going forward, yeah. if it fits the character's personality, the character's the feel of their universe, then that's great. But I hope they don't start shoehorning this into everything just so they can like swear more and show more blood and gory deaths and stuff. You know yeah, what I, mean? I think it... it- Depends on the film. Like they did it. They it was smart to do that with Deadpool. It was right. smart to do it with Logan for sure. Um, and he I think overdue. it's. I don't know. I think it's, Wolverine was overdue, in my opinion, for that. I, well, that's just the nature of his just, character. He, yes, he berserks well, out. But that's the thing. It's the nature of the character, which I think it's the nature of Hellboy. Like it's going to sure. go lend well for a Hellboy movie. If okay. you ask good, me, good. though, all right. Like you read a Deadpool comic. Yeah, he says shit. He makes fart jokes. Whatever. Yeah. But like. He never says fuck. He never. No. He never. Well, there, there's never like tits in a Deadpool <laughs> comic. You know, like there's just there's never right. that much. Like but they took that to a whole. They did like, go too far never, with Deadpool for sure. But like the violence needed to be R. Yeah, the violence is R. But they, I mean, there's Deadpool. there's definitely things in that movie that will never be printed in a Marvel comic. I mean, oh just, yes, they aren't. Yeah. I mean, he's he's like PG thirteen. From what the I comics. understand, that's a little bit of Ryan Reynolds bringing that. Yeah, which but, I loved. I think it suited it. <laughs> which. For, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's because it's, it was him, and I love Ryan Reynolds. So. Yeah, yeah, it suited it for a movie, I think. Right. Um, but I don't know if like Hellboy supports an R rating. I, I've never read a lot of it. You have Dexter. Uh, does, does the content support an R rating? Well, I think it's just the fact that like it's demons or you know hunting demons and and going to be a lot of like giant guns and blood and stuff. Like it's yeah. just it's just so the there violent. is a lot of gore for, in the comics and stuff. Uh, I've not read a ton of of Hellboy. I've leafed through it mostly. I, I, mm. I've been more into like the BPRD. And, and Lobster Johnson aspect. Okay. Like, so I'm more into the side stuff. Okay. Uh, I do have the first two volumes of Hellboy that I haven't really had a chance to read yet. But 
like it's just the the topic i feel like kind of just lends i mean they're, right now it's hellboy and hell or at least that's what they did like a year ago and so like i just feel like that topic kind of lends more towards an r rating i suppose i like, hear that and, like i don't think they need to do everything that an r rating entails like deadpool did. Yeah, there are yeah. levels of yeah. r rating too as well yeah. you gotta keep in mind not everything just because it's r doesn't mean it's going to be just flat like out. i don't like, think it needs know, to be nc-17 nudity and stuff but yeah. there's light r and there's like hard r yeah, yeah. like yeah. deadpool you know I mean? is a hard r yeah. right, right. my parents <laughs> oh man my parents <laughs> my dad and uh stepmom they accidentally they, they thought they were going to see batman v superman but they accidentally went to deadpool instead how do you um Man. I don't know. Like they, like they, they, they probably they, the theater. Or? No, they probably <laughs> asked the attendant, like, "Oh, what's that superhero movie out?" And the attendant, the only, and this was before Batman v Superman had come out. It was just oh, before. They were just so early. the attendant was just probably <laughs> like, "Oh, that's Deadpool. Here you go." And they left after like twenty minutes. They they didn't stay. They couldn't dig it. Yeah, because <laughs> they're 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 pretty conservative. No, like, no, that's people, funny though. So, yeah, it's just. I yeah, wish I could have been in a theater with them. Like, where uh, are you going? Oh, uh, picturing them watching hey, this. You. You two, where are you going? <laughs> Sit down. Yeah, I know. It, it would have been great. So next piece of news is X-Men The Gifted trailer arrived. Oh, no, I Did you see that. this? Oh, oh well, let's pause the show and watch it real quick. All right, so we just paused the show to watch the X-Men Gifted trailer. Um, and this is one of those like trailer for the trailers, which I just hate about this day and age. Uh. Um, but... But we actually did get more than we normally get in a trailer for the trailer. We got a decent amount of info. Yeah, um, better than the Star Trek one where it's just showing you the ship. Well, it's the, always a J.J. Teaser. Abrams is such a it dick. It made me mad. I don't yeah. like teasers anymore. Teaser, yeah. that's the word. I don't want a teaser trailer. <laughs> it's like uh, 30 seconds or whatever. It's like, just just give me the... Give me the trailer. Yeah, yeah. In my they, opinion, I wish there was just two trailers for a movie. One like six months before it comes out. Another yeah. one like a month before it comes I, out. There you go. The thing that I, I do appreciate, at least of this teaser, is that it shows you the quality of the show. Mm-hmm. And that was my main gripe was just is just like usually the show version. I said this last week. The show versions of these Marvel or of uh, superhero things just aren't as don't have as good of a caliber as the movies do. Yeah. Uh, and polish. Yeah. And, and this definitely looks like it, it's yeah. got a good polish to it. And it made, it, does. it made me excited. Whereas before I was not. Yeah. I I'm stoked for it, man. I mean, I, I hope that we don't run into like superhero fatigue because like the movies are enough, but then now we have in humans coming out. We have, um, Oh yeah. We have the new sci-fi show about Krypton coming out. We have X-Men, the gifted coming you, out. Krypton's a show. Yeah. It just got, a, it just got approved. You to could, a series. You could hmm. argue that we've already been in fatigue though. I don't think, yeah. we, I don't think a lot of us have realized it. Uh, Cause some of us are right now. Though. Cause some I think of us are really nerdy to the point where I think <laughs> where we feel like we're in a golden age of it, where it's some degree, even as a nerd, I feel like there is a little yeah. bit of fatigue already there. When did X-Men come out? Is that like 93? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so we've been in it. For I like mean, think over about 20 it. Years? Okay, think about the boom wow. of when all the superhero stuff started. Not quite. Okay, like yeah. with like the you know uh, Iron Man movie, the first couple Iron Man movies, uh, mm-hmm. etc. Those started like what? What year was that? Like 2008. Yeah. Something oh, wow. like that. A little yeah. further back to the five. Maybe came out in 2000. By the way. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Why did I think 93? I'm I, I thought so too. But uh, the real <laughs> boom, I think, hit when like Iron Man hit because people were like, yeah, oh, Marvel, Disney, you know, and then one like, really Avengers is when yeah. it hit. Um. And then they start realizing, oh, my Iron Man blew up and made all this money. And then that's when all the yeah. others start going, okay, make another Iron Man. Then we're going to make a Captain America. And then it started slowly cranking them out. Yeah. And then you started getting TV shows. And it's like, we've been in it for like, I know, but like 10, Mar- 11, 12 years now. I think like two movies a year from each company is probably a good number. But now Marvel is getting into like three movies a year and more yeah. TV shows. There's going to be a point where the general population gets sick of it, and like, and yeah. I I hope that doesn't happen. But yeah. I, you know, I just everything know. has its turn where it runs yeah. its course where it's really hot. Like it doesn't go away. It's just hot, hot, hot. Everybody wants it. Everybody's getting it. There's merchandise, yeah. and then it dies down a little bit. And that's where people like us, the hardcore, stay with it still. And yeah. it, it gets hot again with the general public. Type I think stuff. it's yeah. it's nice though that's that there's like, like we're almost getting into genres within the genre though because like you have Marvel's the, really good about that. Well, I mean. And, and uh, with Fox doing it too, you have like the Deadpool's and the Wolverines or yep. the Logans, where they're, they're rated R. They're yeah. a little grittier, and then Marvel has their kind of themes. Uh, but then, like, you, then you have Guardians of the Galaxy as opposed to uh, well, yeah, like, whatever's going on in our, on on Earth. And then you have, I mean, Ant Man is a heist film. Doctor Strange, yeah, yeah, exactly. Doctor Strange is a Harry Potter type like magical film. Yeah, um, Guardians of the Galaxy is a space opera. You know, I mean, like it's just there's different types of films within the genre. I just yeah. hope we don't get to the point where it's like 
I, I don't think they'll ever go the way of the Western or anything. Yeah, I was going to say, the way of the Western, not. like, uh, who said that? Steven Spielberg. Yeah. yeah. Um, so moving what does on he know news. about movies? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so moving on to news, a fan built a working Cortana holographic personal yes. assistant. That was sweet. Yeah, we watched a video of this fan. Like, Cortana, for everyone who's out there, is the uh, personal assistant from the video game Halo. Um, Halo? And this, is, this looks like... A Princess Leia, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope hologram that yeah. comes out of R2-D2. I mean, this is a legitimate hologram, and the most impressive thing about this is that, like, a fan made this, you know? Yeah. That's that's insane and, to and me. More, more specifically, Cortana is the AI who personally assists Master Chief, who is the flagship character for Halo series. Yeah. If you don't know who Master Chief is, I mean, anybody. It's your main dude. Yeah, he's the main, he's the man, so he's awesome. But yeah, she assists him personally, and... yeah. Yeah, dude, hmm. I'm a geek cool. for some Halo. I would love that. Yeah, if they don't I know, make right? that like a public thing that just blows up, they I'm need to all make it, it so that it works on your watch though, That'd be or sick. that like you have a handheld thing that, that Master Chief has. Well, yeah, and I don't think we're there yet because the well, no. the hologram he, looks like it's encased in like plexiglass yeah, or something. I think it's the glass that helps it look like a hologram. But yeah, yeah, the lights yeah. reflecting and stuff mm-hmm. projects it. But uh, we're getting there, so that that would be awesome if we yeah. do. Um, so yeah, that's all I got for news. We can move on to the book reviews. <laughs> All right, so book reviews this week. I'm going to talk about the indie books. Uh, I'm sorry, the individual issues first. Um, and I want to talk uh, about the first, um, like, the number one issue that we had this week, and that's regression number one. Um, and I, w- I always want those to come first in the in the book reviews, just because, mm-hmm. like, they're, we're promoting new artists and uh, people. Um, so real quick, regression number one, the creative team on this one is Colin Bunn. Colin Bunn. Why does that sound familiar? Colin mm. Bunn. Is that Have we a, had anything before? No, it sounds like a celebrity name. Anyway, uh, Danny uh, Ariel the Oracle is looking into it for us. Uh, Danny Luckert and Marie Enger. So Danny Luckert is art. Marie Enger is coloring and letters. Colin Bunn is story. Um, so I started reading this book as I was eating breakfast this morning and imme- immediately stopped until I was done eating. <laughs> yeah. Because it's a very gross book. Um, very, very gross book. Well, can, well, can the I ask, cover what, tells what, you. What were you eating exactly? <laughs> like eggs and beans and rice. It was oh, like, the beans. Uh, yeah. That's what gets you. Oh, man, it was nasty. He's eating maggots. You're eating beans. So oh, close. So gross, man. Oh, there was some awesome. nasty stuff in this book. <laughs> Ariel's face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it was, it was like, gnarly. Ugh. Um, so yeah, it's, it's about this guy who gets, he, he's seeing shit basically. He's hallucinating like anywhere he looks, he's just hallucinating, uh, bugs and maggots crawling out of people and he's having nightmares about this stuff. And his friend tells him that there is, uh, she has a friend who can help him with this, which I don't know why you wouldn't just go to a doctor, but whatever. Um, and this guy is a (laughs) hypnotist. So we follow this guy, go to a hypnotist and try and get some help from it. And it kind of leads us into a greater mystery. So yeah. first off, overall thoughts on the book. What do you guys think? I like the art. It came yeah. out off the bat. I was like, okay, this this has me. The art's not bad. It's good. Um, I don't know. I, I found myself just kind of just going going down like a what – I'm, what am I trying to say? Like a trail of trying to like, okay, where's this going? Like, yeah. What, what's happening here? Like what's wrong with this dude? Yeah. So it, it had my attention for sure. It didn't do a whole lot, but it still kept my attention. So that's definitely a plus. Normally, I jump off the off the boat by now. By the end of the, because it didn't do anything. Yeah. But yeah, it's a good setup. I'm ready for to see what happens next. What do you think, yeah, Dex? I I didn't care so much for the art. Uh, it looks mm-hmm. very computer drawn to me, and I I, I think I just prefer the more mm-hmm. uh, hand drawn look, like traditional. Uh, yeah, which is fine. And I, I, for some reason, like it just reading it, and I don't know if it was the scripting or if it was the drawing, but I just kind of kept coming out of the story and maybe it was just I kind of kept having was that problem too just disgusting mm-hmm. bugs everywhere and so then I would just choose not to want to read it but I mm. did enjoy I, I like the, so when I first realized what it was I was just like oh man not another horror like we had demonic. there's a lot of horror coming and I think that's kind of like an image thing maybe I don't know but they do I, quite I was, a bit of horror I'm, I'm kind of just getting tired of the horror I mean it's not a genre that I was ever into in the first place but at the end of this comic, I did enjoy it, uh, oddly. Did um, you read the analysis at the end? That helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you read uh, that too? The analysis mm-hmm. really struck me because uh, – partly because like 
to dive into it a little bit, like it's a story that this guy has been writing like ever since he was a kid in his head. Yeah. Uh, and I find that co- kind of cool because like I think with me that like I have a story in my head that I've been working on since I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And so like it kind of I think it's a uh, it's a good thing to keep in mind for, you know, indie creators. Like, you know, if you have a story that you're working on, don't I guess you, you don't have to rush it. I mean, it's best to get it out, as, you know. As soon as you can, I suppose. Like, right. just start working on it. But it's kind of cool just to see an instance where, like, this guy's had this story going on for a while in his head, and mm-hmm. he's finally able to get it out. Um, but, no, it's kind of a weird story for sure. Um, and I'm not, like, super excited about it, but I'm definitely interested. I mean, I enjoyed it, um, yeah. and I'm interested to see where it's going. Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting thing because Cullen Bunn, which, by the way, my uh, Ariel texted me. He Cullen Bunn wrote Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Oh. And he also wrote Night, nice. of, Night of the Living Deadpool. Okay. So. okay. I knew I knew it from yeah. somewhere because I'm a I Deadpool saw him for a, sure. in a panel at Comic-Con. Uh, oh, really? Deadpool. Yeah, cool. you seem like a nice I have guy. both of those books, too. I don't remember. I, I knew I knew it from somewhere. Yeah, those are some of my favorite Deadpool stories, but... Um, Cullen Munn talks about at the end his father was a hypnotist and his father kind of like he hypnotized people and then he'd go into like details about their past lives and these people would like like in real life we aren't in the story now we're in real life like these people that his father would hypnotize would talk in different languages that they never knew before Mm -hmm. I mean like really eerie stuff Um, and, and this book kind of stems from like Normally, someone, when they're guiding them through the last 10, 20, 50 years, um, they, they start talking, but this one guy just was silent, completely silent. Um, and so that's where the series was born well, um, in that young man's like eerie silence. Well, it, like you mm-hmm. take people beyond like their their current life and so far into the past where you would enter like previous lives, right? Like ten, and twenty, so, fifty years yeah. back. Yeah. And so like when it got to the the guy's previous life, like he he got silent, which his dad just said he was like a new soul and didn't have previous lives. Right? Yeah. But the kid, as a kid, the writer, yeah, was just all like, or was it a previous life that was so horrible? <laughs> he the, doesn't want to repeat it. Yeah, he just right. doesn't want to talk which about it. Is pretty a scary thought. Like, I suppose it is man and it's a scary thought to think about like you know being in this position where you're just seeing all this stuff and like mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. what do you do because he's know? seeing it like during just natural like normal conversations with friends yeah. and stuff like a buddy's talking like hey man we're at a barbecue you, should, you need a mm. beer let me get you a beer and as he's talking all this stuff oozing out of his face like yeah. cockroaches and worms and bugs and stuff well, like out of the dude's eyes and mouth yeah in front of his face and he's like oh what's wrong with you because he doesn't know that he's seeing this stuff and it's like I don't know it's really jarring I mean yeah. that, that would freak anybody out I also did like the character sheets at the end that was pretty nice yeah, that was cool. uh, I like that looks so. like there's a couple detectives in there that weren't in this story that I'm assuming are going to be yep. investigating the the death at the end yeah yeah for sure and that'll be an interesting thing they they yeah. got me hooked for a second issue at I, least i like the pop of colors here and there too yeah, like yeah. he's yeah. talking with his girlfriend she has a green dress on they should do a, a close-up on her face on a couple of panels mm-hmm. and her hair is really orange for, yeah you know it's a yeah. redhead and her eyes are really popping with the like a bright green and blue. yeah yeah is it blue or is it green blue. i can't tell oh, maybe i'm, I'm, col- maybe I'm right. colorblind <laughs> i don't know oh. yeah <laughs> That'd be right. No, I know, green, right? Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I love how the, the the use of color on the panels and yeah. whatnot, on the the character models and stuff. I, I thought it was pretty cool. How they, yeah, how he did. I it. agree. I agree. I, I like them too. I think I just realized too. Uh, like, so when he's being hypnotized, going into his previous life, uh, the creepy um, musketeer looking dude. With the mm-hmm. goatee. I think that I didn't realize that that was his previous life. I assumed it was just like somebody from his previous life. Oh, okay. But I just realized oh. uh, when I read it, I read it on my phone, and just now I'm bringing it up on the desktop, and I'm seeing the splash page, and that on one side it's the current him, and on the other side it's the the creepy dude where he's with like the kissing knife. the girl from the past. Uh, yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. And so like on here it's the guy from that the story is about, and then here it's the it's yeah. the guy that's been that uh, he. It's like licking the blade, and then well, then when he wakes up, that guy's like attacking him with the knife, and so I just realized it's probably like a split personality that he has. Yeah, which yeah. I'm speculating. I don't. It's not established, but yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so let's talk star ratings on this one. I probably was at like a seven on this one. I think where were y'all at? Yeah, about seven, seven point five. Yeah, I'd give it a seven point five. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, so definitely worth a read if you're into the horror genre. I think yeah. you'll you'll lean towards it a little more. Um, so we have another book to review. This is one that I didn't really care for, but Black Cloud number two was not a fan. I had no idea what was going on, dude. But that I, was the problem from the first one. <laughs> exactly, read, exactly. It yeah, doesn't so give you anything to hold on to. Story on this one is by Jason Latour, um, and art is by uh, Ivan. I'm sorry, Ivan Brandon did the script. 
uh, which I think was a lot of the problem was in the script. Yeah. Um, I think there's a good plot here, probably. It's just not scripted very well. Art is by Greg, yeah. Greg Hinkle, colors by Matt Wilson, um, and color flats by D. Kniffy. So, um, yeah, man, I, I really don't even have much of a synopsis for this. I mean, we follow this girl along <laughs> on her even, journey, but like, I don't know if I could recap this. If I don't I think tried. there is a synopsis. What does image say? Oh, mm-hmm. I, I can go to their website really quick and see. Um, black cloud number. It, it just felt really Number disjointed two. for me. Well, like, I, like, I wanted to like it, and I want to like this so bad. So, yeah. the synopsis on this is Zelda has a knack for finding trouble, and as she slips away from the consequences of her actions in the outside, new dangers find her in New York. What? Dude, I just okay. have no idea. <laughs> okay, no, time out. Stop. What the fuck did she do? I, I have I don't no idea. Well, yeah, so because he jumps between worlds and stuff. I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. Well, <laughs> no, I get, I get it, man. I have no freaking clue. Like, it's, I don't know what she did to get in trouble. Though most really. of the dialogue does not uh, make sense to me. It doesn't. Like I have no idea what's going on. But I, from what I gather, like I'm guessing in the uh, other, <laughs> in the outside. So like in like this, the parallel dimension, whatever. it yeah. is. Yeah. Like I'm guess I. From her conversation with that lady, it seems that they like attacked somebody as a group and failed. And then there's a dude involved, and he's gone. So something now. that we don't that we haven't seen yet. That yeah, implied. I just but the I feel like this okay. it, this was a really there's a lot of uh, comic here that didn't tell us anything. <laughs> yeah, man, and I, I mean, I didn't even really dig know. the art as much either. Like, I really don't like the way they draw people. Um, like, some of their faces are a little too big, and I, hmm. I, I don't know. I it, just some people just have big faces. I thought it was funny how they ha- the guys with the, with the red hats though, like they're trying to like, yeah, kind of and it says a, uh, "Dream Huge." It's like kind of taking a jab at like a Trump kind <laughs> oh, of. Oh yeah, it is. Is yeah. that the guy's name? He, like, I thought huge that was kind of funny because like there's a whole bunch of like you and your stupid hats need to get the hell. And there's a dude here. with a pin that just says "Huge." Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to make. <laughs> Pins that just say huge. <laughs> yeah. Please, hey, please speaking do. of which, now's a good time since you brought that up. Just wear on your to, pants. For us to play a, <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's play a quick game really quick. Oh, no. Um, yeah, this is a quick game of who tweeted it. It's going to be oh, a huge no. game. Who, you need to put a pin that says huge and put it so, on your jeans on your leg. So <laughs> who, who tweeted it? Donald Trump or Kanye West? Oh, man. Uh, so... My tweets are a form of contemporary art only compromised by people trying to tell me what to tweet and not to tweet. Pretty sure that's... I'm oh, going to go... Wow. It, when he says contemporary art, I feel like it's no, Kanye. Yeah, West. that feels a little more Kanye. I don't feel like Trump's going for art. I'm going to guess Trump because people are telling him what to tweet and not to tweet. <laughs> that's true, too. Kanye had the same problem, didn't he? I don't know. That was Kanye. Follow. Yes! Yeah! Oh, man. Nice work. Okay. All right, next tweet. I've never seen a third person drinking Diet Coke. That sounds uh, like Trump. Trump. That is Trump. Yeah. Nice. What did well you done. guess? You didn't make a guess. Did you have? I, one? I didn't guess. Head? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. He had no um, thoughts about it. I don't know the answers to these. Ariel okay. made this. So, uh, Robert Patton. Robert Pattinson should not take back Kristen Stewart. She cheated on him like a dog, and will do it again. <laughs> Just watch. He oh, can do much Kanye. better. Kanye for yeah, sure. Yeah, I feel like I'm gonna guess Trump. I'm actually. gonna guess Trump because I don't think Kanye would care. <laughs> that is Trump. It was. Oh wow! And that's our. Why does he give a shit? Watching, I know, you know, right? He probably has all the Twilight. And, you know, and you know, he watched the movie and not read the book. He has all the yeah. Twilight, <laughs> and they're signed. Um, so, uh, question, the wrong person. I have six of these. So, number four: Are you also worried about being likable, but only a few are concerned about being great? Uh, uh, Kanye. Kanye. I'm going to say Trump on that one. I don't know. It's Kanye. Uh, I thought that being dang. great thing was nice. like make yes. America yeah. great. only missed you know? one so far. I've okay. not missed one yet. You bastard. Uh, amazing, <laughs> amazing how the haters and losers keep tweeting the name fuckface Von Clownstick like they are so original and like no one else is doing it. That's definitely uh, Trump. Trump. But, yeah, because someone called him fuckface. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Trump then just yeah. so I'm a winner. Yeah, that's Trump. Yeah. Yes. Because I, nice. I knew someone called him that. Which I oh, think, yeah. I thought that was nice. a pretty clever insult actually. <laughs> <laughs> fuck face von clown stick i don't yes. know um all right that was it no, yeah, one, more. no one more yeah. i have no interest in working with anyone who is too important or too good or too traditional to take a call at 3 a.m oh that's kanye for yeah, sure I'm kanye. Hearing that one. i'll say kanye that is kanye yeah, yeah. he's yeah. the I only person some, i remember him complaining about somebody not taking a call at 3 a.m i was like what the fuck man yeah i know right <sighs> good game guys yes it yeah. was yeah so getting back to Black Cloud, though. <laughs> Both of them are douchebags. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. If I can say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, 
Anyone who who's called Jesus can't be bad. Yeah, yeah. right. I know. Oh wait, yeah. he calls himself that. Never then mind. yeah, never mind. <laughs> he can't be bad. Um. So so getting back to the movie, to the book though, I did miss the huge hats though. Huge. The the hats that say huge. That's you're, I you're seeing loud. you're yeah. seeing a lot of the uh, the artists and writers sort of take jabs at Trump in the comics. Like like in DC, that's happening a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so like that's always fun. Well, we got we had three and a, we had three and a half more years of it. So get get used to it. Yeah, guys. I know, right? <laughs> hey, half um, a year down, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, so yeah, this book was a mess, though. I mean, some of it I can save for yeah. art, but like otherwise, I don't really even have much to talk about with yeah, it because no. I just don't know what happened. So I I'm at like a five out of ten on this one. Maybe maybe even lower. I don't know, maybe a four out of ten. I, mm. I really didn't I, like it. I don't mind the art so much. I don't mind it either. Um, I know. I feel like some of the art saved it. I think from a, oh from yeah, yeah. A zero. Like I, I think it at least gets four or five points for art. It's good and it's hard, but it's hard to describe it to some degree as far as it being kind of cartoony. Yeah. But, but like very, if I if I can read a comic cartoony. and not tell you what happened in it, then I feel like it's a low score. Yeah. Sure. Oh yeah, that's gonna get a below five. See, yeah, I, I didn't mind the art. For me, it's like it was just the story itself. Like I, I found myself trying to like, okay, am I missing something? I, I even, mean, I went back and read panels again. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe read that that previous couple pages again to make sure I didn't and then I, I didn't miss anything. It just doesn't make tell sense. the story right. I wasn't a fan of the art, but I'm. But that's just it. The art was still good. I think it just wasn't my style. Sure. The, the story, though, I think was just told badly. Like I think it was lazy yeah. scripting. Um, Something like that. I mean, it just wasn't scripted. You should When it comes to a book, a movie, or a TV show, any of that stuff, it, it, as long as you haven't missed anything, like literally got up and you went to the bathroom and missed something, it shouldn't make you feel like you missed something as you're watching it. Like if you've yeah. been paying attention and the person's done a good job telling that story, you shouldn't feel like that. Yeah, I mean, it, this book is like a fever dream kind of it's just yeah yeah I that's mean, a really good way of putting it yeah now, <laughs> can, now let me play a little devil's advocate for one second though do you think maybe that's on purpose like a memento kind of thing where it's like uh, uh, it's meant see, to yeah, have well, pieces missing i mean that's possible because so that like, they're gonna reveal stuff i mean because if no. that's the yeah. case i want memento is still f- enjoyable to watch well it still true. made that's sense true. but the, and the, i mean I can see your point though, because at the beginning of this issue, she talks about how like when you transition back into our world, you don't remember. And we know nothing initially. about the, that. That when she says that, yeah, that's at the beginning of the damn. And first I think book. that's part of it. Is just like they they need to explain like what's going on, like just on the surface of like what that other more. world is, like yeah. what she what her powers are. Like I I feel like we need more of an explanation. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So let's let's talk ratings on this one. Uh, I I gave it a four or five out of ten. What are you guys at? Yeah, I'm gonna give it a four. Okay. I'm going to go and call up my boy Andrew Southern, and I'm going to give it a fuck it five. Mm. Fuck it five. Yeah, yep. that's actually coined from another show uh, yeah. where they say fuck you five. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, I heard Andrew you know. say it first. So I'm going to give it to him. Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> uh, that's cool. <laughs> um, so, so moving it on to Green Valley number eight, a book that I actually did enjoy quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know if Dexter is really into this one. Is Are you as much no. as I know uh, Mono and I are a lot? Not huge into it. Uh, but you don't like fantasy, though. I remember you saying that. I so. do. <sighs> I don't like fantasy. Yeah. Well, you don't no, like, I usually do like fantasy, uh, and I usually like sci-fi quite a bit. Um, mm. I don't know what it is about this. I just can't. I have a hard time getting into it. I Did chuckle. you read the first couple? No. Uh, that might be part of it, too, though. I sat yeah. through you guys talking about it, though. Because there was a really good He setup. jumped out like four. I think it was like book three or four he hopped in. Yeah, I think you guys had talked about the first one on the first issue, on the first episode of this. Uh, yeah. yeah, we first started and I wasn't here on for this that. podcast. Yeah. 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 Um, but but yeah, I, I'm thoroughly I, enjoying the dinosaurs. Yeah, I don't know. I really enjoy. It. So let, let let's talk about what we liked about it. Mondo, you've been reading this from the very start. What do, what do you dig about this book? I like the character arcs. They've gone from like the they show them at. I mean, and it's a, it's a trope. It happens in movies and stuff. Shows these guys at the height of like their awesomeness in the very first yep. issue. It shows like how these guys are like bantery buddies that are. They kick ass and they know what they they know what's up. They they're mm-hmm. doing their thing, mm-hmm. and it shows them riding high on the horse, literally and figuratively. Mm-hmm. And so then it shows them getting knocked off the horse and getting their asses kicked, and all everything they love burned at the ground, and they had to start over. They're broken people, and then they start to build themselves back up slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even Gulliver, the guy who's like in uh, there dude, killing dinosaurs, th- th- he book, lied. Like watching him kill actual dinosaurs. His arc is the best. That's yeah. like the coolest thing because he's been lying about that from the very beginning, yeah. <laughs> slaying dragons. Yeah. And then you're sitting here watching him like just 
kicking ass and taking names with dragons. Yeah. Like, that's so great. Like, like Bertwald gave him, like, a little lecture, like, in the previous issue. It was like, dude, is, we know we don't give a shit about that. You are who you are, and we love you We're for We're the it. knights of... Kick some ass and take some yeah. names, and he sends them on his way, and he's, he's, he does just that. Yeah, so you know? re- really good stuff. I, yeah. I really hate to see my boy fall to the uh, dark side and try and go back and change time uh, to save his wife. I, I really don't like that, but, so, you know... Uh, uh, on that though, so yeah, they're fighting about going back in time and saving his wife. Who's the so that's the gray haired guy, right? Yep. So who's this black haired guy who's like trying to stop him? That's his buddy Ralphie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. Ralphus, I believe Ralphus. Called Ralphie yep. for short. But um, he's like um, I don't know. But they're like the knights of whatever together. They're like sidekicks, but like his sidekick, his, his, his right hand man. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and he's and Ralphie's kind of trying to talk and talk him into like, hey, you you shouldn't go back in time and change it. That's gonna mess stuff up. You you gave us a lecture about that. Yep. Um, <laughs> and he, the boat but he's just it. like he saw his wife get murdered, man, like burned alive. He wants to save her. I can't say I'd do any different. You know, like that's right. that's tough. He's a good guy. He wants to save his wife. Um, and uh, at the end of the book, the tables are turned in a little bit. I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone, but. Um, but it's it's a good story, just all in all. I give this one an eight out of ten. I really like it. So the artwork just ramps it up for me. I love the artwork. I love anytime you have dinosaurs and anything. I, I love it because I love Jurassic <laughs> Park. Um, I but, love how yeah. it's paying off finally. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm almost at like an eight point five or a nine. I think. I'm gonna like, say, I, I'm gonna say eight point five is yeah. an accurate yeah. rating. Dex, what do you think? I, I would say just based on this issue alone, I'd give it an eight point five. Okay. Uh, it, I mean, not really knowing too much about what has happened in the past. Um, it was a lot of fun seeing those dino- that dinosaur fight and, and like knowing that that guy was a liar about being a, a dragon slayer and just seeing him really pull out the yeah. stops and mm-hmm. be a badass. I mean, like anyone who like or like any time where somebody's doing a joust with a T Rex, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. Really cool. And he beat the T Rex. Yeah, he awesome. did. So, um, well, he so, ended up writing it, which was the funny part. Yeah, that was the awesome part. <laughs> so, we got a little bit of time left here to talk about Fade Out Volume One, our graphic novel of the week. Um, so, creative team on this one. Let's see. Story on this one is Ed Brubaker, and art is by Sean Phillips, colors by Elizabeth Brett Weiser. Um, so this is a noir crime, like this is noir this, to me. This is what noir is. It's a noir crime novel. Yeah. Mm. Takes place back in Pearl Harbor time. 1940, um, I believe uh, it was what it was. The whole communist uh, thing where the FBI was investigating Hollywood for commies. Yeah, like 1948. 1948. Yep. yep. So... Um, so I only read half of this confession is I just didn't I, have time. Um, my, my son eh. didn't take his nap today and therefore I only read half as well. I, f- I finished it. <laughs> you did? Okay. Yeah, I mean, you didn't, you didn't miss a whole lot. Yeah. I it mean, it's more of the same. It's an interesting story. Yeah. It's just not really my thing, so to speak. I don't know. I, I typically like noir stories, mm-hmm. uh, detective stories and what I read, I loved it. Um, and I look forward to finishing it for sure. Okay. It, it was a, uh, I was put off, especially at the beginning, having a cast of characters spanning two full pages. You didn't like that? Grid. I don't like it when you have a million characters. 13 characters. Is yeah. Like, um, I think it, they could have done one page. It would have been fine. Yeah. Two um, pages. A lot of people. Much, but I, yeah. I hate it when Marvel does that with their, like, the old, in the team up stories, you'll no. have a first page full of the cast. I don't, like, I don't mind that. I suppose uh, just because, like, the them. thing is, is you probably already know most of them. But then, so then it kind of fills you in for the ones you don't know. But the thing is, here is like, like, um, I have a hard time reading Pride and Prejudice. I mm-hmm. love the story. Like, as far as like those kinds of stories go, Pride and Prejudice actually is really good. But there are way too many characters, and I have yeah. a hard time reading the book. And so I've watched like the BBC miniseries that's, that's like six hours long, Pride and I loved Prejudice it. Prejudice and Zombies. Uh, that's a decent <laughs> book. Uh, I was able to read that movie book. The movie was good, too. Uh, oh, yeah, they I, made the movie. Yeah, I, I've um, heard good things, but I've never um, been able so, to watch it. But anyway, like aside from the fact that there's a million characters uh, – as far as and as far as this just being, just being a really a noir, it's a solid noir. It's if you like noir, it's very good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's it's just your your classic nineteen uh, forties crime story. Yeah, I I don't really know how else to go into it. The artwork sort of supports that noir feel. Um, yeah, it's definitely. Dark. Yeah, yeah, it's very dark, um, very old school style art, almost silver agey. Yeah, yeah. Um, I loved it. Yeah, I even made a bookmark because I was reading it on my on my Kindle Fire, and uh, I made a bookmark back to the cast of characters. Oh yeah, just so that I could call be back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was reading, I was like, okay, who's this guy? And then I went back to that. I was like, oh, okay, he's the you know the dashing leading man or the ex screenwriter. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It, it helped a little bit. 
Um, and like Dex and, and yourself, I love noirs. Um, mm-hmm. There's even it kept making me re- remember a, uh, a game for Xbox 360 called LA Noir. Yeah, oh, okay. which was cool. an amazingly fun game. I enjoyed that so much because it was it was just this type of stuff. You were just a detective trying to like solve crimes based on people's like facial expressions and stuff to mm-hmm. see if they're lying or telling the truth and you had to pluck out information from them and stuff. Right. But I enjoyed it. Um, I don't know. I think toward the end it, it wore on me a little bit though because there was mm. like a lot of exposition here and there and not yeah. a lot happening all the time. So at, at toward the end of it for me it started to drag a little bit. Yeah. But other yeah. than that I did enjoy it overall. Very exposition heavy and it was, it was one that required a lot of attention and I think that's why I didn't finish it is because <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time where like I'm I'm not a great reader so like if if I'm reading a superhero book it's really easy for me to flip through it in 5 minutes but if I'm reading a book like this I really need to like concentrate on it and sure. make sure I'm digesting everything mm-hmm. um and I just didn't have the time to like sit there and read you know so I a lot of this I found myself going back and reading a couple pages over again cuz I wanted to make sure I knew what yeah. was up you know Did right. we give a synopsis? Um no. So ba- uh, basically uh this this actress dies and the writer of, uh, I don't know if she was in his movie or not, but he like wakes up in the house with her mm-hmm. dead body and he wipes everything down, leaves, and then they st- stage it to look like a suicide and he knows that it wasn't. And so then it seems he's trying to solve the murder, basically. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, and it's a murder mystery going from there, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And like, and other, you know, like people covering it up. And- yeah, and then, and other little messed up things happen along this. It's basically giving you a... Um, a, a inside look on like a movie lot and yeah. all the people that are involved in it and all the messed up stuff that happens behind the scenes, people getting drunk and stuff, mm-hmm. people having fights, you know, domestic disputes between, you know, a husband and wife because they think the husband thinks the wife is cheating on him with her agent, all mm-hmm. that crazy mm-hmm. stuff. It's just giving mm-hmm. you like a background of that stuff in a story form here. Plus mm-hmm. all the messed up stuff that happens in Hollywood with, I in mean, in general, you know, it's messed up today, but it was, it was that same way in the forties, you know, I mean, yeah. there's, there's terrible people live out there. I mean, then they, they have a lot of money, which are the worst kind of terrible people, in my opinion. So. Yeah, um, I think it would have helped too, because I, I like when we when there, when there's books where if if it is going to be heavy on the exposition, it's not it's not a bad thing necessarily. Mm-hmm. But give me a few panels once in a while where it's just a splash of like something, so a cool image, yeah. to break up my eyes for a little while. Like, make, give me make a, break. a graphic, yeah. yeah break yeah. it up for a little bit. Give me a few panels where it's just no no you know words and things. Just like give me something to look at. Like oh, that's a really cool you know picture or you know setting that you just yeah. set up the plate for the next part give me a break for a minute sometimes yeah but yeah, yeah i agree heavy. i'm just scrolling through it like every panel yeah has, there's no it, breaks has at, all. at least like two b- word bubbles mm-hmm. yeah every so single one that yeah. would have helped i feel like but yeah yeah um what do you guys think on ratings for this one i give it a an, mm. an eight i okay. liked it a lot mm. yeah i, I mean, don't know if i would say that this is like required reading for comic books no but no i, I don't think you like so. noir like, yeah, yeah definitely check it out oh yes yes um, yeah, I, I, uh, being that I only read half of it that, I mean, that's my rating goes with that caveat, but I, I think I'm at probably like a seven, seven, five, cause mm-hmm. I'm not as into the noir genre, but mm-hmm. I mean, I think if you're into that genre, it's definitely something you would enjoy. Yeah. What, what do you think, Mondo? Um, I'd say a 7.5 sounds fair. Okay, okay. cool. When did this come out? You know, I don't know. Um, the fade out 2015, 2015, Copyright, yeah. okay, cool. Um, so, uh, we are just about out of time here, but next week on Indie Comic Ninja, uh, we have all the comics that I mentioned last week because I was looking at the wrong <laughs> week. So, um, next week on Indie Comic oh, Ninja, well. we have Rose number two. Uh, we have, um, oh, Rose number two. That's exciting. I'm ready. Yep. Then we have God Country number five. The few number five comes up, but I'm not reading another issue of that stuff because I I'll hate try it. to read it. I, I'm going to try. I'm, um, I'm not even going to open it because I just, uh, Ain't no one got time I, for that. I'm just, I'm really <laughs> hoping that that story is going somewhere. Right? Something yeah. about it makes me want to like it. Yeah, I want, yeah. I mean, I, I want to <laughs> oh, like yeah. it. I, I want to like eating healthy too, See, but I just, but that's, but that's so the thing. Hard. I feel like that every time when one of these come out and then when, I'm like, oh, the few, cool. And I opened up yeah. and I'm always more disappointed. Yep. Yeah. Um, because the art just ruins it every time. Yeah. And then, I, know uh, do, uh, I don't know if the art's was right. 
it dis- it's yeah. disjointed for me. It's then very disjointed, yeah. Curse Words number five comes out uh, next week as well, and we will decide on our graphic novel. Man, I really want you guys to read Invincible Volume 2. It's, it's, oh, yeah. okay. it's I mean, it's like, I don't know, man. It's, it's really, Plus an really extra good. credit? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, maybe that can be our graphic novel for next week. I don't know. We'll talk about it, yeah. but yeah. yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that's all I got. If you guys want to email us, you can do so at in- info at indiecomic.ninja. Leave us a voicemail on our list listener line that can be located at 641-715-3900 extension 345703 head on over to our patreon site and help us keep the lights on that's patreon.com slash indiecomic.ninja and if you want to find me i am on twitter at indiecomic ben mondo where can we find you uh on instagram and twitter at nerdy Ramondo. and if you want to game with me find me on xbox live and uh um, playstation network dirty dimes Nice. And Dex. I'm on Twitter, Indie Comic Dex. I also wanted to point out, though, uh, this week, AD After Death number three, uh, the end of that trilogy uh, came out. Uh, How was it? I Ooh. didn't have a chance to read it. I leafed through it, and it looks very good. You should do that okay. next week. Cool. Um, maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll I see. mean, it's a thick book. So, it's a thick uh, book. But I just wanted to point it out since we both, we covered the first two, and we all loved it. So yeah. I think. Do it. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to bring it up. Awesome. Nice. Yeah, I liked it. There there were a lot of words. So, yeah. <laughs> a lot of words. Uh, yeah, I don't know I, if I'd I call it a graphic novel so much, but yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it's definitely a lot of it, It's good, though. It's very good. Scott mm-hmm. Snyder's a good writer. So, all right. That's all I got for you guys this week. Uh, have a good week, everyone. Take care, guys. Later.